Greetings class. Uh, Professor Gaffney, I just want to spend some time with you as we get started. Uh, tonight's class is on Management 550 Leadership uh, and one of the things that uh, we'll find out tonight is uh, just supply chain fundamentals and, and the importance of that. And my intent is to enable you to outline the framework of the standard supply chain understand some of the general principles and concepts, and finally create a supply chain framework as a part of, you know, what you're going to do in the small group exercise. At the end of this, you'll be able to assess a supply chain uh, framework of any distribution network, which is very critical. So before we get started, one of the questions I do have is, did you get your delivery today? Many people today, as we look in the multi-billion dollar industry of supply chain management, where on any given day, millions and millions of packages are coming and going, uh, everything from food to oil to gold, and many people do not understand how that network uh, functions. Many have no clue of the impact that the supply chain network plays in the economy, in business. More importantly, many people don't make the connection that if shipments of food don't arrive in a major city within three to five days, a shortage of crisis can arise. As an example, we see much of this when we see bad things happen, such as in a crisis, a hurricane, tornadoes, where so quickly things happen, where all of a sudden individuals now are out of food, or out of oil, or out of gas, or out of services. And it's really the distribution network that enables that overall city or that organization to come back together. And that's why it's so critical that within this class you understand how to basically develop that. Because if a good framework exists, then a good uh, shipment, a good reception can happen. And in that way we can ensure that you as supply chain professionals can do your job and make the situation flow instead of basically not go. The other thing that you want to take away is understand the supply chain uh, provides a framework of method free to build and assess the quality of the different network. Uh, as you'll learn some of the things we'll cover, you'll find out that many uh, networks are built and dated uh, back in the 60s and 70s, and they have not been updated uh, through this class and through our overall uh, efficiency and efficiency of the concepts and the doctrine, you'll begin to be able to look at these in a different way. And the goal there is to be pull back and be able to see things that you normally would not understand or more importantly would not be able to fix. And so as you generate those discussions and solutions, it's critical that you understand how that uh, works out. The other thing that uh, you want to take away from this class is a general foundation that will allow you to be successful. So with that, let's get started. So as I look around the class, I just ask kind of, uh, anybody understand uh, what is the purchasing function within the supply chain? Bill? Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's a good way to look at it when you think about the purchasing aspects of being able to go in, find raw materials and resources, and be able to actually go forward and then develop that. So as you connect that piece to the larger context of the things we talked about, being able to look at this, it's more like a story or it flows much like a movie. When you look at the first piece of the framework you have to understand, it really focuses on purchasing of goods and materials. That's something to do every day. So relate these things to the things you do every day, and it really does make sense when you think about it. Purchasing goods and material. You go out to do that every day. Next is manufacturing goods and material. If you think about you go into the store, you purchase food, you bring it home, you got to manufacture it. I manufacture it, you know, cook sandwiches, cook steaks, whatever it is that you're trying to prepare, that's got to be done. The next thing when you look at within a framework uh, as we talk about supply chain, it's really the warehousing of goods and services. You cook a meal, what do you do? You can't leave it out. you got to either put it in the oven or either put it in the refrigerator. 
so that you can keep it basically cool until all the other parts of that meal are integrated, much like shipments that we move um, within a supply chain. And finally, it's delivering it to its final destination. Uh, think about it in that same respect where you prepare the food, you prepare the plates, and you basically deliver them to the individual that you're going to have over for your house. Uh, hopefully they bought the beer, or either they bought whatever you drink, and they're not there to just uh, consume all your food without bringing a, a gift that would be nice for them to do. But uh, one of the things you pull away is this, is now you've basically built that overall uh, final delivery. So when you think about it, forward or backward, it's really the fact of delivering goods and services to a customer. And you, you take that simple model of thinking about you just having someone over to prepare them food or you preparing food for yourself. You can apply that to about anything. So within a supply chain, it's the linkage back to where the uh, product or item originated. So as we think about it, we'll take another example. Think about uh, your overall car. Your car is not working, you take it into the shop. These parts, when well, parts come from somewhere, they got to order the parts from the manufacturer. The manufacturer, of course, has to make the parts to get the goods and services of those parts out of the ground, and then from that, they're warehoused. And so it's, it's a cycle that you'll see that is sometimes stagnated by the fact that different portions of the chain can be used at any time to kind of go forward with that. And that's a general framework of that. So within that, one of the things that we move on next um, is the key point, is just some of the common terms and methods that you need to look at within the supply chain. Uh, you've seen your notes and you've done your reading. Uh, the common terms that we look at are basically uh, shipment forward. The next piece you look at is looking at uh, what it would be in terms of reverse logistics. In other words, you ship items forward that are used or not used, reverse logistics and shipping items back. The other piece that you look at in terms of shipments that are moving, uh, they're typically moved either by air, by sea, uh, they're either moved by ground, such as trucks and, and, and trains and any of those items, and those are the parts that make up the network if you look at some of those common terms and methods. The next piece you kind of look at as we look at this framework of what goes into the framework is understanding the types of supply chain networks that exist. You have various supply chain networks. They can be supply chains that are made for liquid, uh, moving fuels and oils and things like that. They could very well be uh, supply chains that are made up that are moving uh, basic goods and services, such as supply parts or such as foods that we talked about earlier uh, that deal with refrigeration, or they can be specialty supply chains, such as dealing with items that are a little bit more sensitive or a little bit more critical, and uh, they have a very different time frame that would be used for that. So, Fred, what do you think is one of the things that uh, would be important within a specialty supply chain? Exactly. You know, shipment of blood. Uh, things like that, and, and what would be critical about that? Right, refrigeration, and that's what makes it specialty. Specialty is not for everyone, it's just the fact that especially has a unique uh, component to it that must be addressed in order to ensure that the goods and services get there. So the final pieces we get to as we're going through is, is you think about, you know, the assessment of your supply chain framework. When you look at your supply chain framework, one of the things that you have to understand is you know how the four, the, the, the basic uh, building blocks that are there, such as we talked about, uh, being able to purchase goods and services, being able to manufacture, you understand those pieces. So as you assess, one of the things you have to connect now is being able to ask the question of, are the flow of goods and services moving up and down the chain in a way that would be supportive? And that's one of the things that you look at. Now, there's different metrics and dashboards and different things that you're somewhat familiar with from your undergraduate studies that you would need to use. But what are some of those things we could take? Yep, yeah, right, Bill. Yeah, we could take a score uh, card because that card has already been generated. Um, right, uh, the ISO, which is the international uh, standard uh, organization table, which is something that can be used. Uh, for the overall assessment, which are all critical pieces that are there. 
So we've moved through the overall pieces of the things I told you we would cover, which dealt with the common terms and methods of a supply chain network. We talked to understanding the types of supply chain networks. First, we talked about specialty uh, supply chains. We talked about standard supply chains. And we talked about how to assess using different tools and different ISO or either basically using different dashboards or different things to help you to do that. So, in closing, I'd just like to say uh, our goal was to be able to explain that standard supply chain. Um, and basically, as we've gone through, uh, I've taken a look at some of the work you've done in your small groups. I think that that's good, so no issues there. Uh, you all have done great work, and I think you have a good grasp of material that we've covered today. And it's foundational because for our next two lessons coming up, we need you to understand that so you can understand how to operate the supply chain. Uh, at this time, are there any questions? If not, I will post uh, this session online for your refresher. And if you wish, I have an extra credit uh, Q&A posted for those that wish to test themselves on some of the common terms and some of the other material we've discussed. Uh, please stay out of the uh, go ahead and please sign out at this time, and um, I will stay back for five minutes. If anyone has additional questions, if not, other than that, have a great day, and uh, look forward to you after our next class.